Hey guys, Mr. Ridgeway here. For our next lesson, we are finally going to be uh, defeating Deutschland, uh, de or the defeat, the, the defeat of Germany, rather, okay, uh, in World War II. So with that, uh, we're going to do another warm-up on Pear Deck here. Uh, so this is on the next slide. It says, uh, how are you feeling about your knowledge of the events of World War II so far? You just drag uh, the, the little blue icon that's down here at the bottom. Uh, you drag that onto a face, and we'll kind of talk and um, do some reflection on how you feel like things are going so far. Uh, once you've done that, uh, it says, uh, you can see here, we're going to start off with our mini lesson today. I'm going to let you know in advance, it's a little bit of a longer one. Uh, and then what we're going to do from that point on, actually, I need to fix this, uh, fix this agenda. But we're, we're going to do some uh, reading of a real academic history article and look at some um, of the implications of that and also some strats around that. You'll see why we're doing that here in a second. Um, but really today, um, what we're going to be hammering down on the mini lesson hard are the reasons uh, and the consequences for particular invasions by the Allies at certain times and how that ends up in Germany losing in World War II. Uh, so with that, okay, uh, we're going to talk about opening second fronts against Germany, okay, and also then Germany having to confront those second fronts. Now, uh, uh, again, I want to remind you, and I'll uh, continue to do this throughout this lesson, uh, that Russia is always occupying German um, headspace and attention on the Eastern Front. And again, they're going to bear most of the weight uh, of casualties uh, with fighting Germany in all of World War II, by far. It's not even close. Uh, with that, though, okay, uh, we have to also then look at what's happening on the other front simultaneously, because that's not something that we can't discount either. All right, so with that, um, because we're gonna be focusing on how do the Allies really win against Germany, uh, we're gonna look at what the Allied approach was and kind of um, you know evaluate and see and kind of try to understand uh, what they're planning here and going for. So the backdrop to a lot of what we're gonna be talking here is that Stalin is in Russia, again, is screaming at the Allies uh, to Churchill and to FDR, please open a second front against Germany. Because again, um, Germany, other than you know dealing with the whole Operation Barbarossa thing, is really just chilling there for um, you know all of 1941 and 1942. Uh, and so, uh, with Stalin looking for to, uh, you know some pressure to be relieved on him. Uh, the United States and Britain have to kind of consider, okay, where do we want to open up multiple fronts against Germany? Um, the thing that you need to know, okay, is that military planners for the Allies know that they are simply not ready in 1941 to invade Europe itself. Like, for example, like invading France again. Uh, however, their own people and Stalin, they are demanding some type of action. So what we're going to see is then we're going to see kind of there's there's three um, kind of minor attempts made at first. And again, when I say minor, they're just consequentially a build up to the, the really, really important one, which is the invasion of France itself. Um, so what are these three minor ones? Air bombing raids over Germany. We'll talk about those more later. Uh, the invasion of North Africa. OK, and if you look down here, you kind of see that red blob down here by Africa. That's what we're talking about there. Uh, the invasion of Italy. Okay, which is also known as Operation Avalanche. Okay, that's down here. And then finally, the invasion of France itself, which was Operation Overlord. Uh, and we'll take a look um, at that here at the end of this lesson. Uh, okay, so we're gonna deal with each one of these things, uh, except for the bombing campaign, which we're gonna kind of kick down the road for a while. Um, let's talk about Operation Torch and what North Africa was all about. So the first second front that is opened by the United States and Britain is in North Africa. Um, the thing that you can kind of look at North Africa and very validly ask is why? Um, there's kind of two thoughts behind this. First, uh, the Allies would like to get their troops practice, which of course is a valuable thing. But also this would help um, secure the Mediterranean for uh, Britain, who again was trying to maintain control of the Suez Canal and things like that. Uh, so with that in mind, then this is where the allies target first. Um, it gives them practice, it gives them training. And although there's a, a quite a bit of back and forth warfare here and some really interesting tank battles that happen, if you're into that kind of stuff in World War II, 
definitely worth checking out. You can look at Rommel and his, uh, you know, the, the Desert Fox, as he was called. But the Allies are very successful here in pushing most of the German and Italian troops uh, that are there out of North Africa. Um, now, moving on from that, the invasion of Italy. Uh, this is what we call Operation Avalanche. Here, Opera, well, Husky was one part, but then Avalanche is another. Uh, but let's get into it. Um, the invasion of Italy follows that success in North Africa. The thing that is really strange about Italy, uh, well, being multiple actually things that are really strange, is that initially by the Allies, it's thought of, um, Churchill calls it the, the soft underbelly of Europe, and it proves to be anything but that. Um, the initial invasion, actually, of Italy itself um, goes totally fine. Uh, it's very smooth. Um, you know, Italian forces aren't really, again, the, the best in all of World War II um, compared to, for example, the Germans. And Italy will actually not only um, surrender, but then it will switch sides. And right when Hitler figures out this is happening, Germany reinforces and sends thousands of troops down into Italy, uh, again, from, from Germany. And that's when everything in Italy just becomes incredibly slow and incredibly bloody. Um, so it, it, it goes really, really well at first, but then not so much. Um, so basically what happens from this point on uh, is that the Germans start making these lines of defense in Italy. And these, um, these kind of, you think of them like, the, like, kind of like the Maginot line, but German versions of that. And the those those lines, as well as the Alps um, in and of themselves, um, again, the you know, Italy has those high mountains, right? That makes taking over Italy really, really difficult. And in fact, like not even all of Italy is even taken back by the time that Germany actually surrenders. Um, so again, it, it kind of just becomes a very, very slow bloodbath because of things like geography and stuff like that. So that being kind of a disaster then, uh, which it did not go well, um, let's, let's kind of talk about why um, these second fronts are getting opened. Um, do you think they mattered? Um, and again, I, you're kind of, a, I'd like you to, again, if you were doing this with a partner, that'd be wonderful, but if you're doing it on your own, um, do you think that these, this is actually worth the Allies' time, or is it more of a distraction? Um, here's kind of what I was, again, kind of thinking. Um, again, this is kind of what I hit on at the beginning of the lesson, is that it forces Germany to troops, uh, commit troops elsewhere. They have to constantly think about it. And then also it gives um, allied troops and commanders practice on um, things like Blitzkrieg. Now this is where um, we're going to finally lead up to the big one, which is the, the biggest of the, the second fronts. Um, so defeating Germany in World War II means that you simply can't fight Germany to a tie. Uh, you have to not only like beat their armies, but you're going to have to invade. I mean, you're going to have to take out Hitler. That, that, that's ultimately what's going to have to happen. And you're going to have to you know, crush its armies. You're going to have to uh, defeat its citizens. Uh, and, and this idea okay, of like, uh, you know, crushing you know, civilians as well as armies is this idea called total war. That means you can't just like leave Germany sitting there. So the Allies have to start thinking about a cross-channel invasion. Um, again, uh, kind of doing the opposite of what they had to do uh, in 1940 with, uh, with France. So uh, they begin planning this. It's called Operation Overlord. There's a lot of deception and, and months and months and months and months of planning, uh, years of planning. Uh, they go into this and um, there's, you know, all these, you know, feints and, um, you know, plans to try to get Hitler to think it's going to happen in one location as opposed to the other. Uh, and eventually what happens is that the Allies will land on five beaches, which I'm totally going to remember here. Gold, Juno, Sword, Omaha, uh, and Utah beaches. There we go. Um, and they are going to attempt, at least the idea is they're going to establish a beachhead there, and then they're just going to start unloading more and more and more and more troops. Um, now, the fighting on each of these beaches is very different. Um, having been to Omaha Beach myself, uh, that is a very, very different experience than, for example, Utah Beach or some of the other beaches where some of the other allied, um, you know, the allied uh, armies land at. 
Um, Omaha Beach is particularly bloody. Um, I would encourage you, I can't show it in class, but uh, if you go and you watch the first, it's about 20 minutes of Saving Private Ryan. It's an older movie. It's got Tom Hanks in it. Um, you can look it up. Just, again, be warned, it's full contact. Um, I've been told by World War II vets and um, heard from you know them and what they thought about the film. They said it's probably the closest thing to what landing on Omaha was like. Now, basically what's going to happen from this is that the Allies are going to establish Beachhead and they push on to Paris. Um, so here's, uh, here's what Omaha looks like, okay, or Omaha. Uh, here's what Overlord looks like. Um, and really what Hitler was kind of thinking, I can tell you what, what his plan was. He was thinking that the Allies would land at the shortest point between uh, the two, um, you know, the, the two uh, kind of um, points of the channel here. Um, but really what Hitler had done across all of this is that he had established something, um, basically it was called Fortress Europe or like the, the Atlantic Wall that was designed to try to keep, um, you know, and just crush the invasion um, before a beachhead could be established. Uh, but from there, okay, and also there's a ton that we could talk about this, like, you know, that the Allies drop paratroopers and, you know, to, to sabotage, you know, the Germans from coming in and crushing, you know, the, the troops landing. There's, there's a huge amount of things that deserve to be talked about there that we simply don't have time for. Um, the last thing that I'll leave you with is Hitler's, um, again, you don't need to know a huge amount about this, is Hitler's really last gasp attempt uh, to um, hopefully reverse the tide that feels inevitable on the Western Front. And that is he does um, this massive attack in uh, December of 1944. Uh, which is called the Battle of the Bulge. And the reason why it's called that is because he all of a sudden um, surprise attacks with actually more troops than uh, he had invaded France with uh, back in 1940. And um, it creates this massive bulge on the map. Um, however, uh, this time the, the, the Allied armies, although they do retreat and many, many are captured, um, you know, as you can see there, in some cases around like the town of Bastogne, they just don't surrender. Uh, and then in other cases, eventually they're able to kind of absorb that and push the bulge back. Um, and really what happens from that point on is that the U.S. pushes back, they push into Germany itself. And uh, how the war really ends is uh, the Soviet Union this entire time has been closing down from the other side uh, of Germany um, and very destructively has been marching across Germany and the, the Americans let the Soviet army uh, take Berlin, okay? Although it will be cut up later, and we'll talk about that. Um, so with that, okay, um, I'm gonna kind of leave you here with the last question to um, kind of end on. Um, should the US have taken Berlin? Okay, and you, you'll get to pick here on, on Pear Deck between all of these three choices. And you'll see why I'm asking you this question because this is going to come back to have some really consequential implications as I duck here to keep my face on the camera. Uh, so should the United States have taken Berlin? That's option one. Um, it would have taken Berlin off the table, but it would have angered the Russians and might have heightened tensions in an upcoming Cold War. We'll talk about that soon. Uh, and then should Russia have been allowed to take it? Uh, it would make the Russians happily, uh, happy, but then you're giving Berlin over to the Russians uh, and you're going to allow it to fall under communism. Uh, at least for the U.S. Uh, and then should the Allies, again, Britain, France, the United States, uh, should Russia and the U.S. split control of Berlin? So you acknowledge the contributions of each side, but then you make Berlin a contested area in the upcoming Cold War. And we'll actually talk about what option really uh, get, gets gone for here. Uh, so you can choose an option. How we're going to end is I'd like you to draw or type two things you learned in today's lesson. I guess, by the way, I didn't mention how um, the whole Hitler thing ends. Uh, Hitler um, poisons and shoots himself and um, AIDS burn his body with gas. So that's kind of how that all ended. And then the rest of the German army surrenders. So uh, at least that, that is what we call VE Day, Victory in Europe Day for the Allies. All right. Uh, with that then, that being a long mini lesson, we're gonna probably take a brain break here in class. Um, so again, if you're like, oh my gosh, that was so much, it's totally okay to take a break here um, before continuing on with us. Um, we are gonna spend the rest of the class actually reading um, this academic history article. And the reason why we're gonna do this is because there's one of those fronts that we just skipped back there, and that was the whole Allied bombing against Germany. 
Um, I'm going to do this with you here, uh, at least kind of at least walk you through it. Um, but the reason why we're actually going to read a real academic history article, at least snippets of it, uh, is for a couple reasons. First, um, you're going to encounter these things more as upperclassmen, and then as well as in post high school settings, okay, you will encounter inevitably some study that you'll have to read about something if you plan on going to, into that kind of work. Uh, and then also uh, reading strategies. We can take things from this that we can apply in other areas of you know learning, uh, whether it's nonfiction, fiction, uh, any subject area. And then the last is for the knowledge itself. Uh, there's some cool stuff that we can kind of learn about what um, historians, in this case, there was actually a group of economists, um, went and what they figured out about allied bombings of Germany. So the article's right here. And um, with that, Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to make a make a copy of it, and uh, you'll see over here. And actually, I'm going to have to make it. Let me think about how I want to do this. Okay, so this is interesting. I'm wondering. Oh, I see. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to fix this link because this is what this should look like for you when you make a copy. Um, you are going to see that I have all these comments over here and they might take a moment to, to pop up. Um, I'm not, there we go, okay, there we go. So uh, what's really important here, okay, and I will fix this link so that it works um, for you guys. Make a copy, copy comments. Uh, okay, so there, there's gotta be the way that I can force the, the, the comments to happen. Anywho, okay, uh, over here to the right, I've left you my recommendations for reading this thing okay and you can read through those yourselves uh, i trust um but then you'll also notice just like we did when we were doing our imperialism unit there's some questions i'd like you to answer as you're reading um and these are really really important for understanding um but i've also tried to give you some recommendations about you know good like things like good reading strategies and you know words that you know you might not understand and help you try to understand how they function with with looking at this topic uh, and with that okay what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna turn in your copy um, here okay on to um, you're gonna turn in your copy uh, into Schoology uh, so that I can look at the annotations that you made um, so with that um, that's gonna bring an end to at least Germany in World War two and I will see you guys in the next lesson Bye-bye.